possibility is sufficient. And so I am guided by McGee on this matter in terms of ruling in favour of the point of order which was raised by Jerry Brownlee. So we move now to the vote on the schedules. The question is, and this is non-debatable, point of order. So, so, so sorry, there was a lot of uh, discussion taking place while you were, while you were giving your ruling. So uh, are, are you declining to rule on 1194 where... Where it sets out that, that it's quite proper for the minister to give official advice, you're accepting the torn off bit of paper perforated down the yes, side, handwritten as official government advice. So, you, so you're ruling against 1363. I am accepting that the minister has had official advice. That is what I am accepting. On, on, what, on, what, on what basis? The minister's it, word. The minister's word. So yep. if that, if that, what recourse does the opposition have uh, if it turns out that mm -hmm. advice does not exist? Oh. <laughs> So, uh, well, uh, just let me remind the member that all members are honourable members. And, and, and if at a subsequent time any member is found to have misled the House, there is a course of action right. which is draconian. substantially draconian in dealing with it. Well, it, it, it rules justice in a way which members understand. There's matters of privilege, there's a whole range of things. And, and so the members have that course open to them if subsequently any member misleads the House, and this issue is no different. Right? Uh, well, I'm about finished with this issue unless there is new material. You have ruled out of order the, um, the addition of Part 3 that was in my name. Correct. Uh, I haven't heard any rulings about other yes. order papers that are on the uh, paper. Yes, uh, I, are you now I, ruling them out of order yeah, Yes, also? I did say this would rule out when I, when I responded in the first instance uh, that the current amendment uh, uh, SOP in your name under debate and 3A, 4 and 5, I've already given that ruling. Point of order. Then that the um, advice that you have received from Mr Brownlee is that each of those amendments of itself uh, causes cost that makes material change, you know, would materially change the aggregates, or is it in the aggregate that the advice is, sorry, is the advice that in the aggregate those would cost between 600,000 and 1 million, whatever the figure was? That, uh, by the way, I accept the Minister's mm. word as to that amount. Okay, I think there's two points there, and let, let me just clarify the first point that you made, which is the advice that I as Chair received. The, the House and Committee has received that. It's not pertinent to me only. And the second thing is, I have accepted that in relation to the four SOPs that are in front of us in regards to points, uh, part 3A, 3, 4 and 5. Point of order. My, my confusion, sir, I'm not trying to be difficult. My confusion arises from whether the amount that uh, the House was told uh, uh, okay. is, is material because that's the cost of each of these reviews or it's the cost of all of them. That's a relatively simple question that I thought we should be able to get an answer to. Um, well, well it, this is my interpretation of that. And I think we, we've trolled through this area and, and have established some principles around it. That the Minister has said to us that there is a, an impact on fiscal aggregates with each one of these. Now, um, we've also established that um, there is no threshold of triviality, so we just simply accept it at that rate. The Minister, of his own volition, gave some numbers, and uh, I just am prepared to accept his word that each of the SOPs has an implication on fiscal aggregate, so, and, and I've accepted it on that basis. Point of order, Honourable Trevor Mallow. Um, so I, I just want to check, sir, that you have had an assurance from the Minister that these could not be done within the baselines that are currently available, that this would require an extra appropriation as opposed to using current appropriations. Because if it can be done within the baselines, it will not affect the aggregates. In my view, sir, in, the, in, the, in, in a vote the size of what we're talking about now, a vote that of this size, there is not a bolt of shown hell, sir, of this affecting the baselines of the ACC. He just again uh, affirm to the House and Committee that I'm not privy to any information. The, the member when he raised that point of order said, are you assured that the Minister has told you? 
uh, it has told the House. That's the first thing. And the, the Minister has told the House and Committee that this will impact aggregates, fiscal aggregates, full stop. So. Point, point of order, Mr. I, and I, I now, I mean, I don't want to show disrespect, sir, but you came to the House with the answers to a series of questions. I cannot accept, sir, that you did not have some sort of pre-briefing on this particular matter before you came to the House. It is impossible for you, for you, sir, and I, you know, I've got a, I mean, a enormous personal respect for you. You know, I've known you for a long time and, and, inspect, right. and respect for integrity, sir, but I don't think you should right. attempt to tell the House that you not had been pre-briefed and you were unaware of this. Okay. You clearly were. Let me respond to that. Every day before I come to the House, I spend time with the clerks. That is whom I spent time with. When I come into the House, Mr Brownlee sitting beside me, I said, do not talk to me. And he may or may not wish to confirm that. But I think the member will accept my word. Okay, so I am dealing simply with some anticipation, because this is developing into a filibuster, what the probabilities would be. Well, <laughs> now let me, let me, this is taking somewhat of an interesting twist. We'll put it that way. I'm, I'm not, I don't want to accuse anybody of anything. Let's back off. I apologise for that. But, but it is my perception that, and as it is the right of the opposition, to explore every possible avenue. And it's my responsibility to make myself conversant with pertinent standing orders, speaker's rulings and McGee. Also, we have been some 25 minutes on this matter and I've had an opportunity for the clerks to also be advising me and giving me some quotes like the one that I took from McGee. I didn't prepare that before I came. So the members have to accept that I'm dealing with this as straightforwardly as I possibly can. We'll now put the vote on the schedules. A point of order. Honourable Darren Hughes. Chairman, may I um, first echo what Mr Mallard said about the personal respect we have for you, sir. And would Mr Mallard and I would like to invite you to join us for lunch tomorrow while we're in urgency to make sure we can <laughs> ensure that there's not even a single chance of uh, Mr Brownlee getting to you. I, he'll be in quite a mood by then, I, I predict. Sir, um, I, I want to take you to, to the point where you referred to your role in the, in, as the chair of the committee. Uh, and, and you have a number of functions as the presiding officer, but the protection of the rights of the minority is one of the most important mm -hmm. ones. And it's one that you do uh, very, very well indeed. Uh, you, you referred to your, your view about the proceedings in the House at the present time, and, and it is probably correct that things could be taking an alternative parallel path than what they are at the present time, but yes, uh, three amendments which propose uh, three parts, I, I wouldn't describe in the, in the language you did, although you did, you, you did uh, withdraw it. Rescinded it. it. But, but it. But it goes to the, to the fact, sir, that just because uh, the government is unhappy with the uh, with the process that's been followed by the opposition. Uh, if every single one of our amendments is going to be uh, ruled out because of a claim that it will have impact on the fiscal aggregates, and you yourself have said uh, that, that the triviality or otherwise of, of the cost is irrelevant, it actually means, sir, that the government could rule out every single amendment the opposition seeks to put to this legislation, which affects the lives of hundreds of thousands of, of New Zealanders. Now, sir, if, if we... So the, which is why I bring you back to 119 bar 4 to the very last few words those last uh, sort of seven or eight words, although it is finally for the chairperson to rule. Be because if the government is allowed to get away with this behaviour, and, and the irony, great irony, is we, we spent an hour on, the, uh, on, on this, on this part, uh, part three, we would have had the vote by now and we would, we would have moved on. I mean, the, the, we've lost time on procedure uh, because of the management style, but, but, but the point is, uh, if, if every single amendment is ruled out b because you're saying triviality is uh, not important, th then the opposition has lost its voice, and that's why we're appealing to you as the defender of the minority in the chamber to make sure that can happen because I'm not confident in the Leader of the House's uh, ability here not to try and bulldoze through it uh, b b because he's got the pip about something which is far beyond my intelligence to understand. Uh, well, it, it, I, is I this a to, fresh point of order? Because no, I'll rule on that. I, I, Are you speaking I to I do think one? I should speak to the point of order. Right. Okay. Because um, I think there's been a degree of uh, a motive expression there that's somewhat disappointing. And I just would like the member to consider that uh, while it is the right of the opposition to try and put forward views. Equally, it is the right of the government to govern and to go about their business in the House, and our protections, both yours and mine, lie in this book. So I'd ask the member to look at uh, Speaker's ruling uh, 1193, which is of no lesser import than uh, the um, uh, four, and has in fact been endorsed by former speakers or former chairperson Pettis and Speaker Hunt which states that uh, 320 is not neutral as to whether an amendment is out of order. 
If a member f- 